Hey guys, it's Neymanya and today I will show you how to create this really cool magic flame effect in Photoshop. So let the fun begin. Alright guys, we are here in Photoshop and today we will use this photo of my hand. I actually took a photo of myself, of my hand here in studio just against the grey wall, nothing special. And I used this light, this color LED light with uh, green color from above as you can see here in the photo just to simulate the light that will be actually from that magic flame. Magic flame uh, will be actually a light source and it's really important to match the lighting conditions on all elements in your photos to be able to create realistic photo manipulations. So here we just have, have one element, my hand and the lighting source that will be right here. So this is this LED light. In case you're wondering, I already did a review of that LED light so you can watch it on the link right here. It's really cool gadget to have. Okay, so first what I like to do right here is to extract my hand out of the background because I don't want this background. I just want to replace with a clean, nice wall. So I already did this. I selected and just created the mask. In case you don't know how to do that, how to make these kind of selections, you have full tutorial or on how to select anything in Photoshop on the link right there. So check it out and you will definitely learn how to select anything and extract it out of the background. All right, so now that we are covered that, I just want to create a new solid color adjustment layer with maybe some greenish tone, maybe something darker like, like this. And uh, that's for a start cool. And also I want to change this green into a little bit more bluish tone. So I will go with the hue and saturation adjustment layer, clip it to affect only the hand. And it's beautiful because I can change to any color. Maybe I want the orange look, reddish look, something like that. I can do that, so whatever. But I, I will go with this kind, less saturated effect. And that's cool for now. Okay, the next thing is to create a basic shape for the flame and then uh, create actually model that Frame, uh, flame around that shape. But before we do that, I just want to say that this episode is sponsored by Skillshare. So thank you Skillshare for that. You already know that Skillshare is a huge online learning community with more than 25,000 classes in practically anything that you can think of. So if you want to learn something new to gain some new skills or to improve your current skills in any field like Photoshop, Illustrator, After Effects to learn some cool effects or maybe modeling, 3D modeling. You asked me a lot, will I do some 3D tutorials on you know, Cinema 4D, etc. For now, I will not do that, but you can go to Skillshare and learn basics of modeling or whatever, some cool things or maybe running, cooking, whatever you want. I'm sure they have it. And because they are sponsoring this episode, they are giving you guys two months completely free, full access, their premium account there. So that means that you will get or gain access to all the content on the website. All you need to do is to just follow the link down there in the description and just go create account and gain those two months completely free. Otherwise, Skillshare is pretty affordable. It's uh, the annual plan is less than $10 per month. So after two months have expired, if you want to continue with the subscription, you can do that. If you don't want, you just cancel it, no questions asked, and that's, that's it. So just take this opportunity, click the link down there in the description, go there, two months completely free, free go and learn a bunch of cool stuff. All right, now let's go to the flame. Let's create that basic shape. So first, what I like to do before I do that, I will go to the hand and move it a bit down. And also I want to change the, the position of the palm. So how to do that? First, I want to get rid of the mask. I will right click and say apply layer mask. So I just have a layer without a mask. And then I will go to the edit and puppet work. In case you don't know how to use a puppet work because I will not explain you fully here. You can just go and watch my full tutorial about that on the link right there. Okay, so it's really easy. I will just go and expand this selection around this mesh, as you can see, because if I shrink it, I will cut the image. So I just want to expand it a bit to have some safe, safe frames around. That's cool. I don't want this show mesh and I just want to put one pin here and just to pin those fingers and everything there not to move. So I will select this one, press and hold Alt and just rotate in a wrist the hand like this. So it's going from, from this to like that, right? Because after I took a photo, I, I saw that maybe it would be better if I tilt a palm a little bit. So this is a cool way to do it after, right? You can even go like this if that's your thing. So if this is what you like, you can do it. But for this example, I like something like that. And also I'll 
put one pin right here and just stretch it a bit, right? Something like, like this is pretty cool. All right, press enter and that's it. This is before, this is after, really cool. And now I can move this wherever I want, but I will maybe put it something like this. And now we can start with the basic shape of the flame. So let's first group this. Control command G, let's call it hand. Let's group this. Actually, I don't need this, I can delete it. I can put this in a group because I will later add some elements there, just one actually, or two. So this is background. Okay, and now let's go to the flame finally. New layer, I will go with the elliptical marquee tool and just by holding shift, I will make a perfect circle. And for now, I will go with this kind of shape. I will choose a color, so I will sample this color on the glove. And by holding Alt or Option on the Mac and Backspace, I will fill this circle. And this is just as a reference, I will now model a flame around this circle. So there are plenty of ways how you can do this in Photoshop, like everything else. I will go with my custom made cloud brush. In case you don't know how to do it, you can watch my tutorial right there. Or you can just go and purchase this set of cloud brushes at my website for just $1. The link is down there in the description, so it's your choice. Right, so I will go with a new layer, with a brush, and just choose my cloud brush. This is my cloud brushes. I will go with this one for this effect. Okay, and just to show you how it works, it's cool. All right, I will go and just go a little bit around this circle, and then I will change the colors with X. I will go with the black, okay, and then I will go again with the, the steel color, black, and just paint and switch between those two colors. To have something like this. All right, now I will hide this circle and this is our base shape. So I will just add even more color to it. Okay. Actually guys, you don't need to use this circle at all, but I know some of you are total beginners and maybe this is easier way to just make nice circular shape. If you don't want it, you just, you can just go like this without anything, just make this cloud effect out of nothing and this is pretty cool. So this is the shape that I want to have and now there are plenty of ways how you can model this to some cool flame. So one of the cool ways is to go to smudge tool and smudge tool is processor heavy tool so it will in case your uh, photo is a bigger size it will take more time also if you have a bigger brush size of that tool it will take some time to processor process that uh, move, etc. So just have patience with this. So I will go like this and just, just go and make some crazy shapes, right? Make smaller, bigger brushes. Also with this, you can go and change the strength. So if the strength is smaller, uh, you will need to go too many times and nothing will happen almost. So I like to go somewhere around 45 or 50. For this and this is cool so just some kind of of flame and you can always go back if this is too high you can always change it etc so that's cool with smudge tool so i will model something like like this for now okay and every time when I try to make something like this, some kind of fact like this, every time is different because obviously you're making different moves with a brush. But this is pretty cool start. So you can move this wherever you want, but I will leave it here. And now what I like to do here, I like to add some kind of a flames at the top of it. And there is a cool way in Photoshop, in case you didn't know it, I will show you now. There is a really cool way how to create flame out of nothing, basically just render flame in Photoshop. And for that, I will create new layer, use a pen tool, press P on the keyboard or just go right here and just create some paths that the flame will follow. So I'll go with one right here, then press escape, then one right there, press escape to be able to create a new path. In case you don't know how to use a pen tool, again, I have a full tutorial explained how to use a pen tool and you can watch that too and master the pen tool because it's a really important tool in Photoshop. So I'll go with one right 
there actually like this and then go right there press escape maybe one more time like this press escape and maybe one more time why not so here and something like this and i want one down below this is pretty cool now with all those uh, path made, made um, we will go to filter, then we will go to render and render flame. That's really cool. And now we will have some cool window with this is this is how the flame will look like from all that filling all those paths. So that's cool. We can change the width. We can make thinner if you like. We can make thicker like crazy flame. But let's make something reasonable, reasonably nice. So maybe Maybe this is cool. I will press OK and the Photoshop will now render it and I will just press the delete button one time to delete this. So if I hide this, you will see really cool flame effect in Photoshop in a matter of a couple of seconds. It's really nice. You don't need to grab some fire images online, but you can. You can grab some fire images online and put it in stats. So as I already said, several different ways how you can create the same thing but this is really cool and now what i like to do i like to create here and saturation adjustment layer clip it to affect only this flame okay and i will just uh, change the change the hue but i will go with the colorize let's go with the colorize that's cool and for now i will leave it i will leave it like this and I don't like to be just like a regular flame shape. I like to blur it a little bit. So I will use a radial blur to do this and I will show you how. So I will go right here on the flame. Actually, I will convert it in a smart object just in case I mess something up to have possibility to just really easily change the effect, change the filter. And I will go to the filter blur and go to the radial blur, okay? And in this case, I will choose spin instead of zoom. In the previous episode, I showed you the zoom and all the tricks with the zoom. It's really cool. Spin, exactly the same thing. And uh, I will just repeat uh, for you guys who didn't saw the previous episode. This means that uh, the spin effect will go from the center. So from the center of the image. And it's from this. And it will start to blur this like this. So this flame will be blurred left and right like this in the arc shape. So let's go with the 10 and see if this is cool. Yeah, this is pretty cool. Maybe it's too much. So with the smart filters, we can double click on the effect and go maybe with eight, just change it really easily. This is cool. Let's let's go with the five just to see how it looks. Hmm, five looks cool too. So for now, let's leave it like that. Let's create a layer mask. And I want to, with regular soft brush, I just want to erase this thing down below because I don't like it too much. Okay, everything else is pretty nice. And now what I like to do, I like to add one cool image here that I downloaded from uh, some website online and it's this one. I will just copy it. I downloaded it from Pixabay, I think. So you will have all the images down there in the description. You can download it and practice along with me. So now I will paste it right here Control or Command T to make it smaller, something like that. And then I will put it in a screen blending mode. And I have those uh, dark, I don't know, dark frames. So I need to go with the levels. You can go to image adjustment levels or just press Control or Command L and just make everything darker. That's cool. And now again, Control or Command T. I just want to transform this. I want to put it in this kind of a shape inside of everything this is pretty cool now you need to decide about the size so maybe bigger maybe smaller whatever you like it however you like it i will go with something like this and also i will go here and use hue and saturation adjustment layer maybe colorize it looks cool it looks really cool so clip it to affect only that so let me see i can go with saturated version i can go with old way desaturated but maybe something in between and this looks pretty pretty cool effect like really cool strange magic flame like i'm a wizard and i'm i know making some <laughs> magic flame from my magic gloves all right so this is almost done we can we can finish it here it's pretty cool easy nice effect but i just want to add some small particles and uh, 
There is a cool way how you can create a particle brush. I already did this in some of the tutorials, but I will quickly show you now how to do it. Here you just need to create a new layer and I will go with, let's go with 2000 by 2000. 72 dpi, we don't need more. And with white background. And now I just want to go with a lasso tool, regular lasso tool, let's go here like this. Create a new layer and just make few circles. Like this is one, this is two, and maybe here, I don't know, bigger or smaller, depends, maybe like this, right? And I want to fill it with black. So in this case, because black is background color, I will go with control or command and backspace, and that's it. So I will go with the razor tool and just 100% opacity, harder brush. I just want to erase this hard edge. I don't want this. So just play with the shape a bit. And that's cool. We can also blur this if you don't want this kind of, maybe just a little bit of Gaussian blur. No, this is too much, but just a bit, maybe something like this. And I will press OK. And now we will define brush out of this. We will go to edit, define brush preset and name this particles. Okay, press OK and this is it, we have it. But now it's, uh, yeah, this is cool that I messed up here because I had eraser selected and I made eraser out of this. So need to make sure that the brush is selected, then go add it, define brush preset and name it however you want, I will name it particles. And this is cool. So I have my particles right here, particle brush. It doesn't show much because I erased everything so again, brush is selected, edit, define brush preset. And now it's cool. All right, now it's pretty cool. Now we need to go to F5 and uh, change some things. Change uh, shape dynamics all the way, change scattering a little bit. Then maybe you can go shape dynamics and change the angle all the way and brush tip shape, change the spacing. And now we have really cool Let's make small, really cool small particles that I will use for this photo. So what's the catch here? I want to create new layer. Let's name it particles with the same color. Let's put this into linear dodge blending mode. Let's see. Yeah, this is cool. I want small brush and see the spacing is too small, I need to in, uh, increase spacing a bit because yeah, this is better, maybe a little bit more. So now I will go like this and just maybe with 50% opacity, just create some small particles around and I can change size, make some smaller down below. This is guys optional. If you want just to add some kind of particles around, even smaller, like it's going up here and and that's it i think this is enough and also you can add even more images let me show you let's use this one i will just copy this one and add it below particles this is flame number two control or command t to make it smaller and just rotate it something like this put it in a screen blending mode let me see so again optional thing I can go again with the hue and saturation adjustment layer, clip it effect only that, set colorize and choose a color, but this is pretty cool color. And also I can lower the opacity, not of the blending mode or not of the hue and saturation adjustment layer, but the layer down below. And also I can add a mask right here and with a regular brush, soft round brush, I can just 100% opacity, just erase what I don't need like this, all right? And I can move this maybe somewhere here. Let's see. And this is pretty cool. I can also transform it and maybe narrow it a bit, or I can go to warp and, and warp it. And in this new Photoshop 2020, you have ability to holding, uh, by holding alter option key to add those, um, I don't know, like uh, columns and rows and to warp it a bit differently if you want, so you can have even more control over it, which is awesome. And for now, this is pretty cool. I will leave it like that. Let me see. Maybe I like this better. Yeah, maybe maybe I will, I will go like this. 
oops, not like that, but like uh, maybe, let's see, distort, and distort it, put it down, yeah, like this, I like it better like this, and this is pretty cool, we can play with the opacity, but this is what I like, and I think this is pretty cool. Now let's go and uh, add some different background, but before that, let's group everything here, and uh, press Control command g and name it Flame, Magic Flame. Flame, all right? And uh, maybe you can add even more things with this basic shape. Let me show you this really cool trick. If I go to the basic shape, go to Filter, Blur, and Radial Blur, and put this even more down, that means that this part will be more left and right blurred and go maybe with, I don't know, 13. See, it's really cool blur effect. And I just want to go with the eraser and choose the regular soft round eraser brush. Okay, and erase the middle of it and top and bottom. So I have just this kind of shape, as you can see, just to have this, this kind of effect and put it maybe in linear dodge blending mode and lower the past just a bit of the glow around. I like it. So this is pretty cool. Now let's go to the background and uh, let's let's find let's add this as our background here paste it and because it's too big of course i want to make it smaller let's see if i rotate it like like this this looks cool i want this upper part to be darker so this is pretty cool and now I'll put this into multiply blending mode, but before that I can even I can even desaturate it. So to desaturate it, there is a shortcut cool for that. Shift Control U or Shift Command U on a Mac. That's it. Desaturate it. Put it in overlay or multiply blending mode. If we go to the multiply blending mode, we can go right here, create new layer, and uh, choose default colors. Click on this or D on a keyboard. Choose white color as a foreground. Go to gradient tool and choose this second one color to transparent and maybe just make this a bit brighter and put this into overlay blending mode so just to have this down part as you can see a bit brighter just a personal preference nothing special just to have contrast between these and maybe this is too bright maybe just a bit and uh, that's it so let's let's collapse everything let's go to the handle let me show another cool way what there are plenty of things that you can do guys here but I will show you one more thing. So here, this is glow. All right, I want to add a little bit of the glow on the fingers. So I will go with the brush, regular soft round brush, size smaller, maybe something like this. We will see, and I will sample this color and just make it darker like that. And I just want to use maybe 20% opacity brush and just tap one more time here, here, here on every finger and maybe here in the middle. And uh, I will go create new layer again in the linear dodge blending mode. And just, just maybe add a bit of the same, same effect here. And let me see, this is just a small glow on the fingers to emphasize the effect a little bit. You can go also all the way down behind hand, but now what I wanted to do is, is this, let me show you real quick, maybe to add like, like this kind of effect, like is, is going up from the fingers and then with the mask, maybe to delete, to delete from the finger, 100% opacity, just delete, delete it here and, uh, reshape it so this is optional if you want I'm not sure about this like it's cloud and it's raining I don't know maybe a bit maybe just I don't know 20% yeah just a small touch right and that's basically it guys now what we can do we can merge everything into one new layer and the color correct it a little bit and finish it with that so let's do it so to merge it there is a famous keyboard shortcut shift control alt e or shift command option e on a Mac like this then go to filter camera filter and uh, just play with it. I like to add a bit of contrast, open the shadows, but close the blacks a bit. And I like to add some textures here and clarity because it's a cool image for that. Also, I can maybe lower the situation a bit. Then let's go and add vignette. 
So I just want to sh uh, darken the corners and just want to feather the vignette, something like this looks cool. Also, I can go to calibration and just change the color of this more towards the teal like this. Let me see. This is cool. And also we can play with uh, split toning. So there is cool way you can change the color of the highlights. So maybe one highlights to be red and to have something crazy like this and maybe shadows to be blue. So just just some crazy, crazy effect. It's that's something what you want. You can just play with all these colors here and have it. I will leave it. Maybe I will just add a bit of blue in the shadows, just a bit like this and sharpen it a bit, mask it. So everything what is white, it's sharpen. And I'm now holding Alt or Option key to be able to see my mask. So this will be cool. Lower the radius a bit. This is cool. And uh, that's basically, we can lower the highlights, have this kind of effect. Why not? Maybe like that and just press OK. And this is like before and after. This is really really cool effect of course this is just added to the portion of the body it's just on the hand just to see how you can create this kind of glowing uh, fireball effect uh, it's really cool magical effect now you can apply it to any photo that you want just make sure to match the lighting conditions on the photo because that magical flame is emitting the light you need to either you're shooting your own photos need to match those lighting on the shooting like I did with this cool LED light or just find images that have that has similar lighting conditions if the flame the lighting source will be there in that position so that's really important to make even more believable images here what you can do because it's emitting the light let me show you just one more thing you can again go to linear dodge blending mode and just with that same dark color with a big brush 20 percent opacity you can just add no just a little bit of the light and another new even darker version just add this is just optional so you can see this is before this is after just to make impression that this is really emitting the light so that's that's basically it guys so i hope that you like this episode that you learn something new that uh, you uh, have inspired to create something on your own, something similar or something completely different. You don't need to create like a magical fireball. You can create maybe something with lighting effects. I have a full tutorial on that too. Maybe you want something with the freezing arms with some ice at the top. But there is a plenty of cool ways how you can add these kind of effects. It's the same principle, similar techniques, similar tools, but uh, just let your mind uh, wandering around and try to think something really cool and unique. If you have any questions regarding this episode, just leave me the question down there in the comment section below. I will be glad to answer it. And also, guys, if you want to help me to make this channel even bigger and better, you can do that by visiting my Patreon page. The link is down there in the description and you will get also some things in return like my PSD files, etc. So just check it out. And also, if you appreciate this content, if you like this, like this episode, just press the like button down below, share it with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe in case you're not already, and also ring that bell to get notified about all the future content. Have fun experiment and see you guys in my next fun tutorial. Bye-bye.